Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Um, this, uh, this past Thanksgiving, uh, my family was all gathered at one of our many Thanksgiving gatherings, and my dad, uh, who introduces himself as the real Freddie Wyatt, if you haven't met my dad, um, you're missing out. I can introduce you to him this morning before he makes it out of the building, perhaps, but um, he's, a, he's a pretty fun dude, and uh, one of the things he did with our family was he pulled out like two $20 bills, and he said, okay, everybody, everybody gets to guess what date we're going to have the first snow, and he's got the two 20s laying out there, you know, and so everybody's like, you know, throwing out their dates. I think we're going to have the first snow this day. I think we're going to have the first snow this day. And I love what the Christmas season brings. Like the Christmas season brings this anticipation of when's going to be the first snow. And so I got December 24th, Christmas Eve, you know. It's like how much better does it get when it snows on Christmas Eve? Maybe Christmas morning if that's the first snow of the season, you know. But, but the Christmas season brings this great anticipation. Do you remember when you were a kid and uh, maybe you still do it at your house, I don't know, but you would do those little links, those little paper links, you would glue them together and on the first day of Christmas you would tear one off and you know and then like your whole little paper link it gets shorter and shorter and shorter and you're counting the the days to Christmas. Do you remember that that anticipation? I love what the Christmas season brings. It brings a season of music, all the songs and there's great debate over when it's appropriate to play Christmas songs and some houses are divided here this morning on you know some some of you are firing it up uh, the day after Halloween, and some of you say, absolutely not, that's heresy. Some of you are like, a few days before Thanksgiving, you're like, no way. And all the normal people are like, the day after Thanksgiving is the appropriate day to begin Christmas music, right? Um, but it, there's this anticipation. The Christmas songs come. All the food, your, your grandma or your mom's favorite cookies, you look forward to that special food you eat, those gatherings, all those, those outings, maybe Maybe traveling around town and, and looking at lights. Maybe the laughter. Maybe that's, but, but there's this anticipation of all that Christmas brings. But we keep it real here. And for many of us, we would say, you know, Christmas brings conflict in my family. You know, it's like we can kind of maintain some sense of, you know, uh, just calm throughout the year. But when we gather together for Christmas, when we're all under the same roof, it brings it brings conflict. Others of us would say, you know, Christmas brings sadness because of memories. Some of you this year will celebrate Christmas, and it's the first Christmas that you've celebrated without that special loved one. Our heart hurts with you. My grandmother uh, uh, died on Christmas Day many, many, many years ago. And so as we celebrate Christmas and all the wonderful things that Christmas brings, uh, some of us, we Christmas brings um, sadness. It brings memories that that make us um, sad. Uh, for some of us, and I, this, th I felt this uh, when I was a kid, Christmas brings comparison. You know, it's like after Christmas, you just, you're, you're hanging out with your friends in the neighborhood and you're looking at their bike and you're looking at your bike, you know? And, and it's like the classic question of, what did you get for Christmas? And Christmas brings, for some of us, comparison. And then some of our parents, some of, the, some of the adults in the room would say, Christmas brings just another round of debt. Because we're keenly aware that our kids are going to be comparing. And we just want to give them something special. And as a result, we unwisely take on debt. In Luke chapter 2, we see that God has very specific things that he wants Christmas to bring into our life. So the sermon title this morning is just simply Christmas Brings. And in Luke chapter 2, picking up in verse 8, we're going to see three things that Christmas brings. And it's my hope that by the Holy Spirit's power that these truths, these realities, these, re, these things are what God will bring into your life this Christmas. So look at it with me in Luke chapter 2. We'll pick up in verse 8 and read through verse 21 together. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly 
There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured, Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, we pray that as we look into your sacred scriptures, your spirit would speak. We pray, O oh God, that you would speak personally and powerfully to us. Lord, even as we open your word this morning, our heart breaks for those that have been devastated by the tornadoes. We pray your mercy would be poured out on them. Lord, you are a God of redemption, and we know that you can bring triumph out of tragedy. You bring beauty out of the ashes. And God, we pray for miracle after miracle for the folks that lost so much. Father, would you energize us, your people this morning, as we look into your word, would you energize us to be salt and light, to be your ambassadors, to be those that reflect this good news of Christmas. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the first thing that we see in the text this morning is simply this. Christmas brings joy. Christmas brings joy. Now, our experience is Christmas brings anticipation, and Christmas brings music, and Christmas brings cookies, and Christmas brings conflict and for some of us Christmas brings sadness and for some of us Christmas might bring debt but what the Lord wants to say to us this morning is that Christmas brings joy look at verse 10 and 11 with me and the angel said to them fear not for behold I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people can I just tell you, I don't know one human being that does not want a heart overflowing with joy. I just don't know anybody that would turn that away. I don't know anybody who would say, you want to give me joy? No, thank you. You want to fill my heart with joy? No, I would rather be a joyless person. We all long for joy. And this announcement that the Son of God was going to be born came with an announcement of a promise. Joy. Great joy. For all the people. Dear friends, I just want to ask you this morning, could you use a little more joy? Do you, do you need a little more pep in your step, but not just pep, but something of strength that sustains you when days are hard? So, something that, something that, that um, is, able to, is able to stay strong despite circumstances in your life? Listen, too many of us get just tossed like a wave based upon the circumstances of our life. But there's an announcement with Jesus being born that joy is available for all people, for you and for me, for our friends, for our family, for our coworkers. Joy is available. How is this joy possible? We see it in the next verse. Look at this with me. But where is it, where's the source of this joy? Where does this joy come from? I mean, are we just hit like with a, like with a spiritual wand from heaven and we just become a joyful person? No, look at, verse, look at verse 11 with me. Verse 10, And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. How is that possible? Look at verse 11, For. And just pause there and just, I want you to notice that word for. When you're reading through the scriptures and you see the word for, you know that the, the biblical authors are grounding what, the, what was just said. They're, gro they're, they're grounding it. They're saying, based on this, this is how we know what was just said is true. So, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So, so what is the source of this joy that's promised in Christmas? It's a Savior. It's Jesus who came to save us from our sins. Hey, all of us, we've got our little nativity scenes, you know, at our home. They're all set up, you know. Maybe you're still trying to dig out and, you know, maybe you feel like you're a little behind, but you're going to get that little nativity scene. Maybe you drive through town and you see the little nativity scene and we're reminded that Jesus came as a baby. It's, a, it's quite amazing, isn't it? 
He came as a baby. But let's not forget, he came as a baby. He was born to live a life of purity and power, to demonstrate a ministry of compassion and healing. And he went to the cross to die in our place for our sins. Jesus became a curse so that we could become the very righteousness of God in Jesus. Jesus was born to die, and in dying, he bore our sins on the cross. He was buried, and then victoriously, he rose from the dead. He came back to life. Sin could not hold him down. Death could not hold him down. The grave could not hold Jesus down. He rose victorious, and then he ascended to the right hand of the Father after he was seen by hundreds of people. He ascended to the right hand of the Father, and to this day, right now, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father praying for all of his children. That kind of makes me happy this morning. (laughs) And he's coming back, and he's going to take me home, and he's going to wipe away every tear from my eyes. Jesus is going to save me, and the reason that's so, and he has saved me. And the Bible says that he, he, he has saved me, he is saving me, and he's going to save me. In other words, God's saving work is not yet complete. Jesus is going to come return and make all things new. Um. But the reality is, is nobody here this morning can save themselves. In in, in other words, um, you can commit to having a good attitude, a good attitude. But at the end of the day, this world is so hard and so difficult that your willpower will run out. you, You can commit to to looking on the bright side of things, and you can commit to being an optimistic person. You can commit to saying, I'm not going to let my circumstances get me down. But at the end of the day, your willpower, the strength of your willpower will run out. Listen, we need something more than just an attitude adjustment. We need a supernatural, spiritual filling of God's spirit. And And the Bible tells us in Galatians, that joy is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. In other, in, in, other, in other words, when the Holy Spirit steps into our life, when we trust in Jesus, he begins to change us from the inside out. Supernaturally, he begins to give us these spiritual qualities and characteristics. And one of them is joy. That's why it makes no sense to me when I see and meet a grumpy Christian. I'm like, you call yourself a Christian, but I've got my doubts. Why? Because the fruit of the Spirit is joy. In other words, the Spirit of God can't step into your life and not slowly, progressively make you a joyful person. He can't not. It will happen in your life when God's Spirit. It's it's what happens when God's Spirit steps into people's lives. He brings about joy. We, we look for joy in all kinds of other ways, don't we? I mean, it's like we, we want to find joy in all kinds of stuff. We want to find joy in our work. We want to find joy in our spouse. We want to find joy in our house. We want to find joy in our vacations. We want to find joy in all kinds of stuff. Solomon was a very wealthy man. And in the book of Ecclesiastes, we see this like inventory of everything that Solomon had amassed for himself. And I just encourage you to read that sometime because Solomon basically got all he wanted for Christmas. <laughs> he had like the ultimate Christmas list and he didn't like, you know, he was like, like, I want the most expensive Jordans, right? I mean, that's what was on his Christmas list. Solomon had it all. He had servants in his house. He had, he had farms and he had gardens and he had vineyards and he had houses, multiple houses, you know, and You ever seen like Jay Leno's car collection? Have you ever heard about that? You know, it's like Solomon in his day had more than anyone in Israel. He had it all. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 17, listen to me church. Middle schoolers, listen to me. High schoolers, listen to me. There, 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 There is a war going on for your soul. And the enemy, listen to me, the enemy wants you to believe that you can find joy in stuff the enemy wants you to believe you can find joy in money and Solomon had it all in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 17 he says and I hated life I hated life so here's the deal you can spend your whole life working hard positioning yourself amassing stuff 
saving, investing, storing it all up, and having more than anybody in your neighborhood, in your county, and in the state. And you could, at the end of the day, say with Solomon, I hate life. I hate life. Because joy is not found in stuff. It's found in Jesus. It's found in the Son of God. It's found in the King of Kings. It's found in the one who came as a baby, born to die. In Psalm 16, one of our favorite verses here at Real Life, Psalm 16, verse 11, says this, In your presence, God, is fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. And listen to me, friends, listen. If when you think of God, you don't think of pleasure, the devil has blinded your eyes and your thinking. If when you think of God, you think of a killjoy, you've been deceived. When you think of God, you should think about the most joyous person in the universe. (laughs) And in his presence is fullness of joy. And in the scriptures use the provocative language for many of us, pleasure, pleasure. Some of, you, some of you think that God does not want you to have pleasure. God wants you to have more pleasure than you want you to have. <laughs> and it's found in his presence. That's why in, in Luke 2, verse 10 and 11, an angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty good. Great joy. Not just a little bit of joy. I'll take a little bit of joy. Anybody need a little bit of joy? I'll take a little bit of joy. Great joy for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Listen, friends. You can get off the whole rat race of trying to impress God. Jesus did it for us. And that's where joy comes from. God sent Jesus out of his love for us so that our soul might find rest so that we might quit trying to impress God and that we would look to Jesus and say, finished. It's finished. And I get to step into the finished work of Jesus and my soul gets to find rest. Which brings joy in his presence. Christmas brings joy, but Christmas also brings peace. Christmas brings peace. Look at verse 14. This is what the angels declared We'll look at verse 13 and then 14. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. Can you just imagine that moment? We get pretty impressed with like big light shows these days, don't we? Yeah, you know, big firework displays, you know. I wish I could have seen this moment. (laughs) This heavenly host, this multitude of angels. And what were they saying? Verse 14 Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace. Peace among those with whom he is, he's pleased. Peace. Peace of mind. Peace of heart. Peace with yourself. Peace with others. And most importantly, peace with God. That's what Jesus was coming to provide. Peace. That's what the angels declared at his birth. They were like, don't miss this. There's a lot of amazing things about Jesus. But right here at his birth, we're going to declare something because we want you to get it. We don't want you to miss it. Jesus' birth brings peace. There's all kinds of things that chip away at our peace and try to bring anxiety. It's been a brutal couple of weeks, hasn't it? In the news, we we saw that um, uh, a student brought gun and ammunition to Rossview High School a couple of weeks ago. And for every parent, that challenges our, our, our peace. Just over here at Exit 11, there was a murder right over here in our neighborhood, right? In the Sango neighborhood. Just, just this past week, past two weeks, a, a murder. And we hear, like, you know, it's like that, that, that close and that, and that seeks to chip away at our peace. This week I drove over to Richview Middle School after um, early, I guess it was Wednesday morning, I can't remember what morning it was, because there was a, a, a shooting threat by a middle schooler threatening to shoot up Richview Middle School. And I just think, man, there's so many things in this world that if we give ourselves over to them, we can be riddled with anxiety. I just think how many of us just the other night like as the tornadoes are going through. All these things seeking to attack our peace. And don't miss this. The angels said, glory to God in the highest and on earth, 
peace. Peace. In, in, other words, in other words, God was showing us how strong he was by allowing his son to be born as a man and save the world of their sins. It's just, it's just so amazing. And we get so familiar with the gospel story, don't we? We get so familiar with it to where our hearts don't marvel at the fact that God became a man. He took on flesh. He was born as a baby and went to the cross for us. And it's just like when we really slow down, as the scripture says, and be still and know that he is God, our hearts begin to marvel like Mary's heart marveled, pondering these things that the Lord was was telling her. And here's the good news, people of God. Here's the good news. Jesus came to give you and me peace. Peace in the midst of tornadoes. Peace in the midst of school threats. Peace. And I want you to know it's possible for you and me today. Listen, God did not waste the birth, the life, the death, the resurrection, and the ascension of his son. He did not waste that. He secured perfect peace. The scripture says this, that God keeps him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon him. So here's here's the trouble. We want peace but we want to do life on our own. Like, God, will you just tuck some peace in my pocket and let me just go on my merry way, right? But that's not how we get peace. And I've used this analogy before, but I love it. It's so good. It's, it's like on a cold night, you know, and it actually feels like December this morning, right? But on a cold night, we build a little bonfire, and, and you can't get warm unless you get really close to the fire, right? And you can't experience the peace that God wants to give us unless you draw near to him. And the book of James says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. So some of you this morning, you're hearing, you're hearing this declaration that you can have peace. And you're like, it's been a while since I felt peace. How, how close are you to the fire of Jesus? You know, as a kid, I love this. As a kid, I would do this. Did you guys do this? I would like stand with my back to the fire. And I would like hold it as long as I could. You know, it's like, and I just knew my shirt was like on fire right it's like it got so hot I knew my shirt was on fire and then you know what I would do I'd run over and be like daddy feel it mommy feel it feel it feel it feel it feel it feel it do you you guys do that just me just me isn't that a beautiful picture of what we the children of God get to do in this world we get to walk really closely with Jesus and we just get to let the the rule of the spirit of God in our hearts bring peace and then Monday morning, we get to run over to our coworkers and say, can, can you feel his peace? Can you feel it? Can you feel his peace? Because there was, there was just a school shooting threat. And somehow I've got peace. Can you feel the peace of God through my life? Can you feel it? That's what it means to be the light of the world, the salt of the earth. That's what it means to be the ambassador of Jesus is that we walk so closely with him that we actually experience his peace against all odds, against against all natural thinking of what we would have peace. And we get to just let the warmth of his love give us peace. And then we get to be agents of his peace. Can people feel the peace of God through your life? That's hard, isn't it? (laughs) That's hard. I battle anxiety like the rest of them. It's tough. But the truth of Christmas is is that Christmas brings peace. It brings peace. It brings peace over anxiety. And it brings peace over anger. Some of you this morning, you're like, I'm not that anxious, but I'm pretty angry. I'm angry with God or I'm angry with my fill-in-the-blank. Because they did this, they said this, they didn't do this, I'm angry. And this week I was stunned by watching this video of this daughter whose father was killed in the line of duty, I think, as a police officer. And she gave a testimony. And I just want you to see the powerful peace of God on display through her testimony this morning. I just invite you to watch this. I remember having conversations with my dad about him losing friends and officers in the line of duty. I have heard all the stories you can think of, but I've always had such a hard time with how the suspect is dealt with. 
Not that I didn't think there should be justice served, but my heart always ached for those who don't know Jesus. Their actions being a reflection of that. I was always told that I would feel differently if it happened to me. But as it's happened to my own father, I think I still feel the same. There has been anger, sadness, grief, and confusion. And part of me wishes I could despise the man who did this to my father. But I can't get any, of, any part of my heart to hate him. All that I can find is myself hoping and praying for this man to truly know Jesus. I thought this might change if the man continued to live, but when I heard the news that he was in stable condition, part of me was relieved. My prayer is that someday down the road, I'd get to spend some time with the man who shot my father, not to scream at him, not to yell at him, not to scold him, simply to tell him about Jesus. I remember having conversations him, not to yell at him, not to scold him, but just so that I could tell him about Jesus. Friends, I know you feel weak, I feel weak, but our God is strong. And maybe you wonder this morning how, how strong is our God and how powerful is his peace. And I... I don't know that I've seen a more vivid display of the power of God's peace than when a young lady loses her father. That alone has the power to break some people's peace. But she loses her father, and she's not enslaved to anger over the man that shot her father. And not only, not only is she not enslaved to anger, her heart is so filled with the peace of Jesus. She, <laughs> she spent so much time next to the fire that she hopes for an opportunity to meet with the man that shot her father so that she can say, can you feel this peace? Can you feel this peace? Can you feel this peace? Listen, some of you here today, you don't know that peace and you don't know that joy, but you can. And it comes by receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want to give you an opportunity right now in this moment to receive Jesus, to call upon him, for Christmas to finally once and for all to make sense in your mind and heart, for you to get it. Maybe you've gotten it for many years, but you've hardened your heart to it. Today is your day. Today is your day to welcome the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the great joy giver into your heart and allow him to begin to transform you from the inside out. Many of you, you're already believers. You're already a Christian. But you just need to, to get really close to the fire of his peace so that you can be sharing it with others. Would you join me in prayer? All heads bowed and all eyes closed, just in the presence of God this morning. If you're here today and you need to receive Jesus for the first time as your Lord and Savior, if you need the peace that he gives and the joy that he gives, this is what Christmas is all about. I want to invite you just silently, quietly, just to pray a prayer something like this. Lord, I'm so broken. I've sinned against you. And I can't save myself. Lord, would you save me? Lord Jesus, I believe you came as a baby. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead. Would you fill my heart with your peace today? Would you fill my heart with your love today? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And just with everybody's head bowed and eyes closed, if you're here this morning and you prayed that prayer in your heart for the very first time, would you just lift up your hand? I want to I pray for you. I just want to see you and celebrate. I see you, sister. Welcome to the family of God. Would you just look up at me just for a moment? Welcome to the family of God. I'm so excited about this decision you've made. So excited about the peace and the joy that God has given you through his spirit today. The Bible says that though your sins be like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. He removes our sins as far as the east is from the west. The Bible says there's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Welcome to the family of God, sister. Somebody else this morning, 
you're, you're sensing the Lord speak to your heart and you want to open your heart in faith to him to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you want to do that for the first time today, you prayed that prayer, something in your heart is stirring and you know you need the Lord, would you just lift your hand? Let me just see you. Anybody else? I see you, brother. I see you, brother. You trusting in the Lord today, calling upon him to be your Savior? Is that right? All right. He comes into your heart never to leave, to be your best friend, your forever friend, your Father in heaven. Jesus is your brother. He's your Savior. Trust in him and follow him all your days. I encourage you to be baptized. Follow him in baptism. Welcome to the family of God, brother. Anybody else here this morning? To say, I I need that peace and I can't save myself. I must have Jesus save me today. I'm turning to him with all my heart. Anybody, just lift your hand. Let me celebrate with you. Let me pray for you. Anybody else? If you're worshiping with us online, we're so glad you're tuning in this morning. We have people every month worshiping online receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And so if today is your day and you're worshiping with us online, would you just leave a comment right now saying, I'm trusting in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And just welcome the peace of God and the joy of God into your life through the baby son of God, now now at the right hand of God. Father, we just come to you this morning um, broken and needy and honest to say our lives are so often not marked by the joy that you give and the peace that you give. And God, we pray you would change that. Father, we confess that we've gotten away from the fire of your love and the fire of your presence, that we've not walked with you, Lord. We've just, we've wanted what you can give us. We haven't wanted you. And Lord, today we confess and we repent and we turn to you, Lord Jesus. And even in this moment, in faith, we thank you for your peace and your joy. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We worship you in this place. We exalt you, Lord. Oh, Christ, be magnified in our life. Be magnified in our church. Be magnified in our city. We worship you. We exalt you in this place. And all God's people said, amen. Let's stand to our feet, church. Let's sing out.